subject matter, and I, uh, I need you all to pay attention. The appreciation factor misguided. Those of you in the balcony, the appreciation factor, misguided. And it's so amazing because it was it's something about um, when I asked the Lord about, well, Father, what, what should I say to your people? And to be honest with you, uh, the Spirit of the Lord was quiet. And I was trying to, well, you know, sometimes it's, it's not, uh, uh, we think when God isn't saying something, we try to make something to be said. Come on, Pastor. Come on, And I, I, I began to, I, I was meditating. I was meditating, and, and I'm like, well, Lord, you know, and sometimes we can become so anxious that we try to, we were trying to rush something and, and, right, and right. promote and uh, conjure up something so on our own. And because God isn't saying something, God isn't saying anything, God isn't speaking. There is a time when God will not speak. Yes, Lord. And those that are called in must learn and understand how to handle when God isn't saying anything. Because sometimes there's a reason why God will not speak. Come on, Pastor. And I began to ponder on it. And as I pondered on it, uh, 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 my inner man, you know, because the Bible declares uh, the word of the Lord have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against it. Uh, so therefore things begin to come up that I've already known about or that I know about the God that I serve because I have a relationship with Come him. on, sir. And when you have a relationship with the Heavenly Father, hallelujah, when you know, hallelujah, the spirit of the God that you serve, how you really don't have to get in a place, when you're in that place and he does not speak, you automatically think something begins to happen, what's already been told to you, and spoken to you, and things come up out of you that God has ordained. Because sometimes the people aren't ready to proceed and go further when they haven't received what they have right there where they are. Sometimes we try to venture out too soon when we really haven't gathered and understood what's right before us. And it's now and, and the spirit of the Lord it began to when when I finally got it and I understood because of meditation, uh Something began to happen. Uh, the agreement with the spirit began to happen and agree with my spirit. And I knew that I, I was doing it. I was hearing right that I shouldn't move and proceed further to try to give something to a people that don't even understand where they are currently. Uh -huh. Sometimes we can go so far in the, just because it's the word of God and thinking that it's appropriate. But it does not matter where, where you are, where the people are, does not where they will not understand. They don't even understand where you are currently. So how can they understand if you go further than where you currently are? Come on, Pastor. Come on, So so I I said, okay. And, and meditated and I got an agreement in my spirit that know where you are because you must understand that there's a and there's a generation hallelujah that does not know me yes. Yes. and then the spirit of the Lord say and you must tell them clarify now it's not your children's children it's not only them but it's those that are currently here as well as their children yes. Yes. there are some adults that don't know the God that they serve or should serve right 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 so as it said in, in the book in uh, the, uh, as we read in, in Judges there's a generation but we think a generation of as our children after us but it's the generation of the disbelief Disbelief can become a generation because when it's when it becomes to the point where it's more the masses than it is the lesser, talk, talk, talk. that's a generation because the generation of disbelief has become and has started uh, uh, the spiritual realm of who God really is because God, when you do listen, not believe, listen, hallelujah, listen. you hinder the hand of God from moving. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. I said, well, well, and then I... I, I uh, the Spirit of the Lord said, well, you know, let them know that they have confined uh, uh, me. Jesus. And I said, Lord, what do we, well, well, and confinement means when you, uh, to uh, imprison, prohibit, 
from moving. My God. He said, well, how can we con the hand of God or confine God from moving on our behalf? Well, you, uh, when you don't believe who he is, he cannot move on your behalf. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. My God. God, the spirit of the Lord is a gentleman. Yes, he is. And because he's blessed us with and being free will agents, we uh -huh. he's given that much of given us that much of authority. Jesus. They say, Well, Lord, I want you to move on my behalf, or I don't want you to move because and he's drawn by faith. Yes. Disbelief blocks faith from moving. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. When you ask this one, what well, pastor uh, well, how does that happen? And that's amazing because in, in, in Ecclesiastes, when he was saying, well, uh, what, what, uh, paraphrasing, well, we should be able to live life. But he also says when, when you read it, when you read it, the uh, 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 commentation on, on certain Bibles, an amplified version, it speaks that God's, uh, he's placed in every man the uh, innate Ability, thank you, to, to seek him out. Right, uh, right. But we choose not to do it. Right. right. But every man that God has created has an innate thing that he's placed inside him to seek him out. Yes. And the reason why uh, 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 the reason why some of us are, 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 are many now in the body of Christ aren't satisfied because we're we're looking and we're chasing after the wrong thing. Yeah. Yeah. And the Lord is saying, and, and when we do that, you must understand our appreciation factor switches. Because what it is, why you, we must ask ourselves, and he said, well, what it is for, for those of my people that say that they're called by my name, why do they appreciate me? Many of our appreciation now is, is, is based upon what is done for us at the time that we need it to be done. And after it's done, we don't need it anymore. Ah, Jesus. That's good. That's good. All right. All right. All right. Well, Pastor, what, what are you talking about? Well, you must understand now, because we're in this dispensation now that, 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 that prohibits the hand of God from moving. Because he also said, I said, well, Lord, uh, what, what do you, he said, also, you must understand, we're in a place now, we're in a time now with the young, it's not just with our young generation, but it's just the generation Anything and everybody that's a part of this dispensation is part of the nation now. Right, Amen. right. Are you understanding? It's not just our young people. It's everybody, it's you, right. me, and everybody else that's right, in existence right, right. currently where we are. Well, you can touch the person that's next to you. You're part of the generation that they're part of. Right. Okay. It's not age differential. Right. Okay. Good. Good. Amen. Because when the majority of whatever thing is going on in the atmosphere and it's controlling the majority of the people in the atmosphere, which human beings, us, those flesh and spirit. Mm -hmm. But when spirit does not mind who they are, they turn over to the flesh. Amen. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. And the problem is the Holy Spirit says we have too much accessibility without accountability. Mm -hmm. yes. uh -huh. Uh -huh. My God. Well, well, Pastor, how do you, how, what do you mean too much, too much accessibility? Well, you must understand. You must understand. Now, and I understand now. Now, we have to understand now this generation where it applies to now that the generation after us will become more wiser and wiser. You have this generation now, uh, when we're talking about the young people, when I say this generation X, let, let me clarify, generation X now, that you can't tell the tire shoe. Even though they've never tied a shoe before, they have more experience than you, so it's like their ears are closed when you try to tell them that's not how you close to tie your shoe. Or you got a battle when you try to tell them to tie something or to do something now because uh, even though they have no experience, they can tell you that you're wrong. They will go here to Milwaukee disputing what you told them because they're right and you're wrong. And when you think about it, I can't hear nobody uh -huh. but about it. They have more accessibility than we ever had, yes. but they have no accountability. Yes. 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 The problem is now, the problem is now to, to, to have the appreciation factor, you should be able, you should have, because whenever God wanted something to be done and for uh, those that are called by his name, he tried you first. 
or he tried us first. God never turned over anything to anybody until they were proven that they were able to handle whatever it was that he gave them. God, even if you, even with a prophecy, God made sure before that prophecy came that you were going to be tried. If you weren't able to handle the trial, you didn't receive the prophecy. The problem is now, this is the problem that we're dealing with now, and it's spilling over to the, to the church, the accessibility without accountability, uh -huh. because now you have everything that they all they have to do is now is touch a button and this See? tells them, yeah. but they have no experience. Yeah. Their reliability is on touch tones and, and, and touch buttons and this uh, uh, tech IT age now where I do the work. How you going to learn the God that you serve when you don't do any work to understand who you is? You touch a button, they tell you what God is the creator, but you don't know for yourself. So now you understand that now, now how it infiltrates where there's a generation now that don't know God. They know how to get to something from someone else's experience, but it's not your experience. You can't say that you know God through somebody else's experience. Your appreciation factor has been misguided because you don't do anything to get up to appreciate something being done for you. Because if you have to go through something, you don't want to do it. How can we appreciate a God, hallelujah, that when he, when he calls for us to learn who he is, and you have to spend time with him. Well, if I can't touch a button, I don't want to do it. The problem is now that it's spilling over into the church uh, because now we're 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 allowing we're allowing things that we see in the the, the this 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 generation now and it's as opposed to te teaching this generation this is the things that you should be doing this is how you do it or or we drop the ball and we jump on their bandwagon uh -huh. Uh -huh. and now we become we 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 conform to what they do as opposed to what that's right, that's we right. know to do. And know that's right. Yes, yes, yes. Jesus! And know that works. Mm. And then I heard something in the spirit. On, I, was like, what, what he, what, I heard something in the spirit. I said, we are now allowing <laughs> fortified walls to come down mm. and we are becoming our own enemy. Yes. Jesus. Jesus. Yes. And so what you said, well, you must understand this. You must understand this. Uh, uh, from within, the enemy now is not on the outside. The enemy is within the walls of the church. Yes. So y'all don't want to hear. Y'all don't want to hear. But the enemy, that, that, <laughs> what, Pastor, how can that be? Well, Disbelief is the greatest enemy That's that exists. Right. To God. Yes, because to, to, to get to the place with God and have a relationship, that it, it takes belief. It takes yes, faith. Yes, when you do not allow, when you bind the hands of God Jesus. from operating on your behalf, the only thing left is disbelief. Jesus. And those that and the only individual that can control disbelief is the adversary. Yes, yes sir. Are you all understanding? So, and, and that's why. So, the further we get away, and we don't understand, the further we get away and allow our appreciation factor, because we appreciate things and when it benefits for us, or when it's a benefit to us. But what about because when we don't see the benefit, will we still appreciate? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's good. Oh, and the Lord is saying, because of who He is. <laughs> Because he who he is and he understands what it is that he's placed in us. But we won't turn around to follow, hallelujah, how to ascertain and to grow more in him. We would rather someone tell us than not for us to find out for ourselves. I'd rather go on your experience as opposed to experiencing it for myself. No, just tell me about it. It's amazing. Even now when I hear people when, when they miss sometimes as opposed to, okay, uh, get a tape or whatever, take notes for me. And they get a habit, get in the habit and say, well, take the notes for me because I'm not going to be able to make that. Come on now. Amen. My Lord, help us. When it goes on for so long, your intentions don't come. Because you started, they're going to want you to continue to complete it. Yes. 
That's right. Amen. Jesus. The appreciation factor. Teach, Pastor. Where's the appreciation factor? Because uh, I, I, I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, because you, you know, you invest in that which you believe in. Yes, yes, yes. You really do. Because appreciation comes from investment. That's right. That's right. If I invest in the word of the Lord, I expect a yield a return Amen. because of what I put into it. It's no different from the talents that were given to the, the five talents that were given out. There's no different. No difference. Are you going to hide or are you going to sit on it? Are you going to turn around or are you going to give it back to me and walk up to me and say, well, look, I kept it, but you didn't do anything with it. Holding the Bible means nothing if you don't get into it. That's right. Yes. Yes. Dividing the right, the word of truth. Yes. Holding the Bible don't mean anything. Just no, walk up no. to me and say, I got my Bible, so what? What's in it? How many books are there? Do you know how, how many in the Old Testament, how many in the New Testament? How many total? What are the pictures? Do you understand that? Do you understand what's the difference? What's the difference between the Torah scriptures? Do you understand that? How come they're not included into the Bible? Yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus, my God. See, it makes a difference. It makes a difference. But your appreciation factor, because I'm not gonna let anything heart that thing that I believe in and my investment. So you can do and say whatever you want to say, but I've invested in this. Yeah. And it makes a difference. I'm, it's not just I don't treat church as a vacation. Uh -huh. right, right, I don't treat right. church as a vacation because it's invested oh, in me. And if I have breath in my body, I got to make it to the house of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to hear the truth. Yeah. It's not contingent upon how I feel. Yeah. It's, a it's not a vacation spot for me. Oh, this is my life. It was my life before I became a pastor. Come on, sir. Because I understood the importance on getting this into right. the yeah. house of the Lord because I can do whatever I want to do after I give my time to God because if he decided to take his breath from me what good am I you will never see me again if I had planned on going somewhere I would never make it see so I, I'm going to do what I've invested in because I, I like the return that I get People don't understand. Don't let people talk about well, no, which because you don't know. But church is not the building. Church is the people that walk into the building. Don't let somebody say, "Well, I don't want to go there." You no, know, you don't understand. It's not the church. You're supposed to learn learn of God so you can develop yourself. That's what coming to church is all about. That's what's learning of Him. Take up my yoke and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Oh, I don't want to go to that church. It's not about going to that church. You don't want to invest in yourself. That's it. But we allow our appreciation factor to go on something else. These little things that don't do anything for you. It's temporal. These little silly things that don't even benefit you. And you give a... I, uh, we waste so much money on things that don't even benefit for us and we don't get a return for it. Jesus! But every time it comes to when, when the people go into a church and they say tithing, well, this is a part of who you are. My God! And when you understand what tithing and offering, you don't care. Well, okay, that's all I got to give? That should be the attitude of the man. That's all I got to give? Right. Because I know I'm going to get a hundredfold return. Yes, yes, yes. And you know why people complain a lot? Those even in the Bible class, because they don't know how to see the characteristics of God. Oh, when you understand it, you know how to see the characteristics yes. of God. Everybody else's family is dying off. Your family is still flourished. Oh, Everybody else's family is going into the hospital because they got this type of thing, they got yes. this going on. Your family, no one's ever seen the hospital only just to make sure, hey, nothing's going on with me. No, ain't nothing going on, you still good. Benefit God. It's not always about the money because you can be blessed with all the money, you can be sickly as well. What does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? Understand the characteristics of the God that you serve. There's benefits. I'm not ashamed of the gospel that I serve. Hallelujah. I'm not ashamed of the God that I serve because I understand his benefits. That's right. Jesus. Wake up every morning, new benefits. Yes. 
what the word says. New mercies for his benefits are many. So we understand, we have to understand how to see God. Amen. And many don't understand. That's why I was like, okay, Lord, that's why you said no. Where they are now is enough for what, because you don't need to proceed further because they wouldn't understand no more of my word because they don't understand my word currently. Amen. Appreciate where you are. Amen. Appreciate what God is doing for mm, those that believe in who he is. So wow. Because it's not about it's not about finding uh, stories in the Bible to, to uh, uh, elaborate on and to teach about, but it makes no difference if those that are listening don't understand. It makes no difference to, to, to preach on something when those that are sitting there don't understand what is being said or how they can find themselves in what you're talking about. If there's no self-development going on, there it, there it is. Because the word of God is to develop and to grow. But if there's no self-development, you don't you don't need any more than what you're currently receiving. Amen. That's it. Amen. That's good. And that's the faithful. It's amazing because faithful in your understanding with the vision. Yes, Lord. Oh my. And see, we must understand, we must understand that. Being faithful in our understanding, where we, mm, it has to perceive that a gift of understanding is elevation. Come on, sir. But if you're not faithful in your understanding, my God. because your mind will go in two sides, faithfulness, unfaithfulness, and understanding because you're serving something other than God. Jesus. You're giving more time to something Jesus. else other than God. Oh. God is not the number one in your understanding. <laughs> Whatever it is that you're entertaining Woo. is more than what it is for God. Oh. Because your appreciation factor isn't where it should be. On, it's twisted up. somewhere. Mm. Your appreciation factor is towards something else as opposed to God. But if you don't serve God, it doesn't matter. Uh -huh. It only oh. matters if, if God, if you serve God. Jesus. That's, That's good. good. In the name of oh. Jesus. I don't want to get it twisted. Yes, God. That's good. I have to say his son's name so we won't get it twisted. Right. That's right. That's right. It's in reverence to in Jesus' name. Yes, so we must understand our, where, where how is it that our appreciation factor can be misguided. Mm. That understanding. Mm. And it's amazing. And, and, and before I close, it would, uh, I, was, I was reading something in my studies and it said... Uh, uh, it was a survey done that said that history has shown that human nature left unto itself uh, uh, begins to uh, move downward. Uh -huh. Jesus. Jesus. Okay, you already get this. That's deep. Uh -huh. Left to itself. If you were left to yourself without any guidance, you would begin to spiral That's downward. Right. Yeah. So, so in, in, in other words, if your appreciation factor does not point towards God, uh -huh. you begin to go down. Yes. Right. Jesus! Come on, Pastor! Yes. That's good. Amen. My God. That's true. And if you watch, if you look at uh, what's going on in the world today, look, look who's in control of your, you know, mm. we pray for him, but understand where, where he is. Mm. He's spiraling downward. Okay. And those that are underneath them, that's back in them, are begin to spiral because it has nothing to it is flesh. Say it, Pastor. Right. 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 Say it. Say it. Nothing to stand on. If, and when you understand, when you understand the God that you serve, and the God that you serve is about foundation. Uh -huh. Without a foundation, you're not standing. Uh -huh. You're sinking a slow Jesus. death. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is no different than than uh, 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 it's no different than standing in quicksand and sinking slowly. Jesus. Uh -huh. right. Come on. Uh -huh. Because quicksand from afar looks looks as though it's a solid foundation. Yes. Right. Yes. Until you get on it. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Many now in the body of Christ don't even realize that they're sinking. Yes. Yes, God. Many in the body of Christ don't even realize that because are far off. Looks Jesus. like what they do. And to those that don't even understand, because they don't stand up, up under the auspices of who God is long enough to understand his characteristics, Jesus. thinking that what they're doing, they got it going on, but they're gradually sink, sinking oh, no, slowly. Uh -huh. And we began to jump on the bandwagon in the body of Christ. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. 
and God is not pleased with what's going on now. Because we're part of this, and it's amazing because we're part of what's bringing the walls down in the church. Because we've become the enemy within. And we come in because we're not upholding on so many different things now. That's right. That's right. We're allowing so many th different things to come into the body of Christ because of what? And it's amazing because we think our intellect, mm -hmm. uh, we think our intellect is going to get us. <clears throat> it's our intellect that God looks at. It's not God does not look at your intellect. Right. Because your intellect takes you back to the Pharisees and the, uh -huh. and the Sadducees. Read right. your Bible. They thought that their intellect, but their intellect yes. opposed Christ, opposed their intellect. Yes, it did. We're going back to the Pharisees and the Sadducees because we're thinking that way. Jesus. And those in the body of Christ are doing more trying to get a more intellectual uh -huh. than spiritual. Come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. I can't hear nobody. Jesus. It's okay to go back and get your education and understand. Okay. But put it in a place not above who God is. Yes. Understand what your appreciation factor is. Don't put your education above who God is. But now because we got it twisted now, we think our intellect wow. is above who God is. And we place that above him. Before we acknowledge who is, we want everybody to know who we are. Open up your ears and listen. Open up your ears and listen. Hear what's being said. When that becomes the majority, that becomes the generation that we are part of. It's the truth. And no one is becoming the wiser because they're trying to jump on the bandwagon. But God is not in that. The Bible declares that He says, "I'm a jealous God. There should be no God before Me." Right. I am jealous. Amen. For accolades to go before Same. who God is. Same. And they rush to get there. They rush, call me this first. Mm -hmm. Amen. Before you can say who I serve, you gotta say who I am. That's the truth. Come on now, Pastor. Wow. That's good. Yes, Lord. Because the appreciation factor has been misguided. It's turning, it's, a, it's becoming contingent upon what we are and what we're doing as opposed to being this at all times. I am this at all times because without this, I'm nothing. This before there was anything else. Everything else fall underneath this. Before you know anything about me, know that I serve God. Come on, Pastor! I don't try to go out and boast, but I don't deny it. Because good, what you are good. will be seen. Amen. What you are and who you are will be seen. Amen. So why do you have to go make me think that you have to make a, a, a pronounce? That's the truth. You pronounce before anybody because you think because you your intellect and you pronouncing what you ascertain in the natural world is going to move you and elevate you in the spiritual realm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. No. It is not God that's elevating you in the spiritual realm when you don't know who he is. Because our appreciation factor. And before I close, just in um, for your reading, uh, Matthew 25 and 21. And it, it, it's talking a little bit of uh, appreciation uh, and how we could be and who we are. Because it's so imperative, uh, men and women of God, understanding who you are and whose you are. And if you want to have anything from God and understand who He is, sometimes we can overlook. God is not always up in the light. No, that's true. God is not always yeah. up in the light. And we have our direction looking in the lights, thinking that God is not always in the lights. Because God wants to know what would you do when the lights are turned off? There it is. Oh, yes. That's it. Who would you be when the lights are turned off? Because what we fail to realize, light and darkness is the same to God. There's no difference from light and darkness to Him. 
So, but we got it twisted with our understanding, thinking that we're looking toward the light. It's all about the spotlight and the blame, because that's what the Lord is. No, it is not. My God! Appreciation factor. Our time is up.